Rolls over the freshman Dimitri Goodson. That is foul number three on Terrell Harris. Let's head back to the studio and Steve Bunin. Thanks, John. Fran, over on ESPN, number two, Texas dismantling Texas A&M. Colt McCoy has already got two rushing and two passing touchdowns, so that game's a blowout. For now, back to Orlando and the dramatic finish to the first half between Gonzaga and Oklahoma State, guys. Just under six to go here, Steve, and Oklahoma State by five. All right, Coach, I'll let you get it in. Who's your Heisman pick right now? Right now, it's got to be Sam Bradford. Of course, that could change after tonight, but Sam Bradford... And it's gone back and forth all year, as you know, week to week. Colt McCoy still in the picture. Obviously, Tebow has come on like gangbusters. Graham Howell looked, looked like he was in great shape until Saturday night in Norman. Wow. And then Michael Crabtree, you know, you can't leave him out of the picture. Here at the Old Spice Classic, the Milk House, Disney's Wide World of Sports Complex, in Lake Buena Vista. I learned my college football from Ron Franklin. You know, you spend all season with Ron in basketball, and you, you pick up some good stuff. <laughs> Bolden, good move up and under. Hey, Matt Bolden is uh, and a block there as Goodson couldn't get into position against the quick Byron Eton. Eton is so strong. There's a guy that was a, you know, he was a freshman on a high school team in, in Dallas, Lincoln High School. With a guy named Chris Bosch. That's how long he's been around. He was a freshman when Chris Bosch was a senior. And John, he was an unbelievable high school football player at Lincoln High School, recruited as a quarterback. And there was a stretch early in his Oklahoma State career that I think he might have thought about going back out on the gridiron. But midway through last season in the Big 12 under Sean Sutton, and early in this year, he is real. The lights really come on, and he's one of the best point guards in the Big 12. The weight has been an issue for him, but he's really gotten that under control. He's at 210 pounds right now, and it's an interesting battle between he and Pargo when they're on the court at the same time because they're both not big guys, but they're both physical. They're power guards, no question. And, uh, you know, when you get into the lane off the dribble, you really have to be able to body yourself against bigger guys. Watch Down wide. Open. Sacre fighting for the board. See where Gonzaga is at a real advantage is, is depth. Terrell Harris sits down with three. Now you've got Keaton Page, a, a freshman in there. Anthony Brown's got two. And, and that's why I, I mentioned earlier feast or famine for Oklahoma State. There are going to be nights where someone gets hurt, someone gets in foul trouble, and when they go to the bench, it, uh, you know, it's going to really be a disadvantage. Golden will sit down. Stephen Gray, outstanding shooter, will check back in. Matt Bolden, he's really one of the unsung players. You know, you hear so many different names with the Zags, whether it's Heitfeld or Cargo or Day, but Bolden, a very good player. Sacre hits there. Robert Sacre gives him some size. Seven-footer from Canada, and he was just cleared to play with Sacre coming back from foot surgery, so he gives him a little more beef up front. Well, and he should give him some beef because his dad, Greg LaFleur, played in the NFL, an NFL tight end. Keaton Page using a window for two. Now Keaton Page looks like the you know the team manager, but this is a guy that is a prolific score, averaged 33 points a game in his high school career. Good look by Downs and good work by Oklahoma State to deflect it out. And Keaton Page, what was the guy in uh, Hoosiers that made the free throws under him? Ollie. He looks like Ollie. Absolutely. He's Ollie. That's his nickname for the rest of the year in the Big 12. I'm sorry, Keaton. <laughs> He's Ollie. Except he can shoot it better. Gray's triple is short. Eton pulls it down in front of his buddy Pargo. Anderson on the baseline. And it'll go the other way. Offensive foul. So they get Anderson with that foul, and that's his second. And this is the problem Oklahoma State is going to have. You're going to play aggressively. You're going to attack the paint off the dribble. You're going to be relentless. But the, the, uh, the underlying issue now becomes foul trouble. That's good scouting report stuff, too, because Anderson loves to drive left. James Anderson, what a freshman year he had. Now, he slowed down as the yes, season went on. Part of that reason was he's a very predictable player. He's a left-handed driver for a righty. 
and, and gets most of his shots moving to his left. And teams pick up on videotape as the year goes on. A little flex offense. Downs. And Goodson able to get in there and put it home. Mark here has told us this is one of his most unselfish teams. As much scoring as, as he has, it's a very uh, unselfish basketball team. Mello can't hit. Now they push the pace so far in this one, but neither side able to shoot better than 34%. So that's been the issue. Oh, Cargo from deep hits the three, and the Zags take their first lead since 7 5 with 14 15 left. And an offensive foul. Ira Brown energizing his team. Well, Jeremy Pargo, we talked about how he sacrifices his scoring this year, but don't sleep on this guy because he can light it up in a hurry. All right, Steve, we look forward to that here at the Milk House Old Spice Classic, part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's, number 10 Gonzaga leading by a point. Hey, by the way, Doug Gottlieb would have loved this style of play, huh? Well, see, they did run. He played with some very good players. Let's go over to Andy Katz for more on Jeremy Pargo. Well, Jeremy Pargo should be familiar with this sport. He was here for the pre-draft camp in May when they were holding it here at Wild Wilder Sports. And Pargo really did want to stay in the NBA draft. And as you see at the top here, his brother Gennaro played in the NBA, now playing professionally in Russia. The coaching staff really leaned on Gennaro to talk some sense into Jeremy, make sure he understood why he should stay, not go the hard route the way Gennaro had to get to the NBA. Yeah, he waited to the last possible moment. Did Jeremy Pargo to withdraw his name the final day that he was allowed to do so? It's interesting. He's one of those guys that you know, I'm not sure how talented an NBA player he'll be, but he really believes he can play in the NBA, and that's half the battle. Very tough minded Chicago kid. Page from deep. Off the mark again, and a rebound for Pargo. Look at this team. Every time Gonzaga comes back on the court, they have guys that can score. Like Stephen Gray, yes, the sir. leaner off the glass. Overall, I like what Hubert Davis said when we were in Puerto Rico. If you're interested in going to the NBA and you wonder if you're ready, if you have to ask, you're not ready. <laughs> Good work down low. Malcolm Kirkland with the bucket. And they've had to go deep in their bench right now with the junior college transfer from Arkansas Fort Smith. And what you want to do now is no pun intended is just hold the fort down. If you're Oklahoma State, just get the halftime. Goodson foul. And they get Malcolm Kirkland with that foul. Well, ESPN tomorrow, a couple of good ones for you. One Eastern here at the Old Spice Classic. It is number 12, Tennessee, number 16, Georgetown. And then at 3 Eastern, Duquesne and number 5, Duke, all part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. Maryland with a big win in our first game tonight and UNC number one beating up on Notre Dame the other night Duke at five and Miami's only loss to UConn Miami with Jack McClinton you talk about shooters we always talk about Steph Curry Kyle McElwarney of course and Jack McClinton in his own right an outstanding three point shooter they've got a nice club Frank hates on an unbelievable job with the Hurricanes. Jack McClinton, a transfer, a former Siena Saint, right. Randy McCaffrey and company here. You wonder, gosh, can you imagine them with Jack McClinton? Here's Gray the other way, and he's fouled. And you see how quickly Gonzaga does not mind getting the ball out and pushing it on the make. 134 to go here in the first half, and Oklahoma State leading by a deuce. We talk about a staple, you know, we talk about the dribble drive offense by Memphis, but there's a great example of what dribble penetration does to break it. Defense down and a great extra pass by Keaton Page right now, right there, who had the open shot. 
Well, got Jag has caught a little bit of, bit of that Michigan State bug. They're 5 of 12 from the line here in the first half. Usually reliable 72% on the season. Spartans were 12 of 27 in their 80 to 62 loss. And you know, and, and as bad as the.